Welcome to day two of this, this Tari series on how to code the advent of code in idiomatic Rust. So day two is a fun little problem. It asks you to validate a series of passwords using a very simple password policy, uh, which is based on a the number of occurrences that a given character appears in the password so in the test case that they provide you need the letter a to appear between one and three times so this password is valid uh, you need the letter b to appear between one and three times in this password it's not there there's no b in this so it's invalid and then c must appear between two and nine times and that's nine exactly so that's valid Okay, so to solve this problem, I've already laid out some of the scaffolding just in the interest of time. But what we're going to do is we're going to read in the passwords which I've downloaded. And you'll see that the policies are essentially all of the same format. There's a minimum value, a maximum value, a space, the character, colon, and the password that we need to validate. I'm going to assume that there are no exceptions or weird edge cases. For example, that this input is malformed. For example, that this is less, this maximum value is less than that minimum value. But we'll find out soon enough if that's the case. Um, so in the, in the day two solution file, um, as I said, I've already laid out a bunch of stuff, but what we want to do is we're going to read in the data. Um, this is similar to day one. We're going to use the read to string function to read everything in as a vector of strings uh, or as, rather as a string and then slice it up um, uh, using the uh, carriage, carriage return to split it into uh, different records and then we're going to just do a little bit of validation on that input make sure that it can actually pass the constructor successfully on the password policy and I'll We'll, we'll kind of dive into that in a second and then we want to collect that so this is going to return a vector of these password policy structs so as I said we, we kind of just want to extract these bits of information and store them in a little placeholder struct so that we can validate it and to do that I've got a little uh, struct called password policy and it's going to hold a minimum and maximum the letter uh, which you know, we could use a char, but a string is fine as well, and the password itself. And then the, the con a constructor for this password policy uh, is takes in a string and a regular expression, and it will return an option to self. Now, the reason it's written this way is that the filter map function expects an option as a result, so that it knows what to forward onto the collect function. And so that's why we're returning an option here, not a straight up self. The other thing we're doing here is we're passing in a regex rather than creating the regex every time. And the reason is that regular expressions are incredibly slow. And so it's best practice to try and create the regular expression and reuse it as much as possible. Okay. And for those of you who aren't familiar with regular expressions, uh, it, they're a bit of a do double edged sword. If some people swear by them, some people hate them. Uh, if you become familiar with them, you can solve a lot of string wrangling type of issues quite nicely. But regular expressions can trip you up very often. Uh, and these advent to code problems are no exception. All right, so what what is a regular expression going to look like? Well, if we look at the structure of the each of these password policies, there's always a, a value, an integer, a minus, another value, a space, a single character, a colon, a space, and then a variable length password. And, and so we can capture that idea in a regular expression. So just create a constant string uh, that captures this regular expression. So the first thing is that we want a, a series of digits. So the slash D it gives you a series of digits. We want one or more of those. And I'm going to put those in parentheses 
to indicate to the regular expression engine that I want to capture that value and use it later. Okay, uh, then there's going to be a, a dash and then another integer. And then after the dash, it is a space and then a single character. So a dot will capture any single character. Then there's a colon. And then there's a variable number of characters after that. The star means match zero or one characters. Um, and then the, it must be the end of the string. So let's put a dollar there, which represents the end of the string. And I think for good practice, let's put a cap, a carrot there, which says the beginning of the string. So the entire string must match that pattern. All right. So that's essentially what our regular expression string looks like. And uh, when we when we are trying to create a new password policy instance, what we're going to do is match the passed in string against that regular expression, pull out those captured groups and construct the record. Okay, so what we do is we just say let matches equals re to the regular. You can look up the documentation for the regex struct on docs.rs but we want to get the captures so uh, we want to capture from s and let if there are no matches or if there are if there's something wrong here then it obviously wasn't well formed input and we can return none okay now that we have this matches this captures type we want to iterate through them and extract the data that uh, we need in order to populate the password policy. All right, so there's the basic code we've got in each of the groups. Uh, you just call get on the captures object. Uh, get returns an option to a match. So uh, we want to convert that if there is a match to convert that string, it's going to be a string obviously, uh, convert that into an integer. So we're going to take the match uh, represented as a string and then try and pass it as an integer. And if that's okay, we, we're gonna remember that pass returns a result. We need an option. So we're gonna call the okay method to convert this passing result from a result into an option. And if anything goes wrong, we're going to return none as a result of this constructor. Otherwise, we're going to store the result in min. And we can do the same thing for max. For letter, we're not going to do any conversions other than to copy the string as a, an owned or standalone type. And same for password. And once we've collected all the bits, we can return this as a sum, self, min. Letter and password. All right, and that that is our constructor, and that uh, concludes the reading of the data part of the problem. So now reading the data should give us as a vector of these password policies, where we've nicely extracted and converted all all the data from the input file. Right, now the second part is to validate this function. So what we need to do there is say, well, how many times is this given letter present in the password? And it needs to lie between these two values. Okay, and that's basically day two A's problem set. So um, what I have here is a little utility method called is it valid at sled that's part one of the the problem description it's at the sled company and so how do we count how many times the letter is in password well we're going to say self dot password self dot password right and there's a method on the string type called matches 
Okay, so let's see what matches does. It returns an iterator over every match of a given pattern. So that sounds like what we want. We want to match self self that letter. And it's an iterator, so we can get the count of that. And let's store that count. And that's the first part of the validation. Now, now we want to return a boolean. Uh, it must be true if we have the right number of matches. So count must be greater than or equal to self min, and must be equal to self max. And uh, that should be the that should be all we need for part one of this problem. Okay, so I've already gone to the main function, added these particular problem sets into the main driver. So let's see if it compiles and runs. Ah, we've made one bug in our regular expression. So in the regex here, we we can't escape characters like this, so we must just tell it to be a raw string. Let me fix that issue. And let's find it. Okay, and that is, that is the correct answer. So just a quick note on the, the overall uh, function for solving this problem. So the, what I have at the moment is that we're reading the data and then we run an iterator over all those password policies and, and then use the fold function, uh, which is a very useful tool on iterators, which lets you operate on every element in a vector and consolidate it into one result. So it's like you're folding the whole vector into one kind of answer, one kind of value. And what the fold does is it takes an initial value and then it takes a closure where you uh, it gives you the state or the the accumulated value or what you want to finally return and then each element of the vector. So this is called reduce in JavaScript um, and, and in a few other languages as well. And so we could solve this using fold where we iterate over everything and then run um, this. Uh, so we start with zero and if p is valid at, at sled, so if the if this our little validator works, then we can increment the total otherwise return the total. But I think there's a better way where we can start with the iterator and just filter. Filter of each policy and say p dot is valid at sled and and then just return the count, right? There we go, that should quite please that's it. Let's do that. And let's see if that runs. Yep. All right. Part two is just a variation on part one, where the validation scheme changes a little bit. Instead of counting the number of occurrences of this letter, what we need to check is that this letter is in exactly one of these two positions. Uh, these are one index positions, so either the first or the third character. So in this example, A or C. In this example, um, C or E, neither are container B, so that's invalid. And this one should be invalid as well because there's two instances of C, whereas it should only be one. Okay. So let's go and fill in this uh, stub function here, which is checking whether it's valid at toboggan. toboggan that's the new password policy. And the first thing uh, 
we want to do is check whether the, the length of the password is sufficient. So self.password.len. So if it's less than, uh, sorry, not let, if, if the length is less than self.min or self.max. So we want to basically select the highest. This looks a bit confusing. But we want to choose the highest value, which is the max function of our minimum and max fields in the password policy struct. And uh, if that's not enough, then we must return false. We cannot get like the 10th character if the password's only five long. So that's the first check that we want to do. Okay, and then we want to get the, the minth and the max uh, letter in, in each password. So let's first convert things to chars, which are a little bit easier to work with. So in, there's no funny Unicode or anything. These are all ASCII characters. Um, if you did have Unicode characters, we'd have to do a complete, take a completely different approach. But because they're standard ASCII, we can take a shortcut and just uh, take the byte values. All ASCII characters are can fit in one byte. And we can use the char primitive type in Rust as a shortcut to solve this problem. Okay, so let's convert the letter uh, into a char first, so um, we're going to say it's self dot letter, um, and and we're gonna that's a string, so we need to convert that as a byte, and we know it's of length one, so let's convert that to a character. So I'm I'm not doing any bounds checking or anything here. I'm assuming it's one character long, uh, but because we've constructed it with this regular expression that accepts exactly one character, then, you know, this, sh this should hold. And, the, you know, and, and we'll see if, if it doesn't, it crashes. So in, in a kind of production environment, you'd want to take a more defensive programming approach here and handle all the edge cases. Uh, because the input's fairly clean, we're going to take this liberty and assume that the, the, the letter string is exactly one character long. Okay, and then what we're going to do is convert the password string into an array of chars. So let chars equals password dot chars, uh, which is a nice um, it's a function on the on the string uh, on the string type, which returns an iterator of the characters. And let's collect that as a vec of Oopsie. Okay. And uh, now let's let's build up two booleans indicating whether it matches the first or the second character. So I just want a reference to this vector, convert it to a slice self.min uh, and that min is one indexed one indexed and our array is obviously zero indexed so we need to subtract one and we want to see if that is equal to letter and similarly for the second is max equal to that and now our test is that we want exactly one of those to match so we can just say first exclusive or second that should do it. Let's see. Four for one. And I believe that is the correct answer. Okay. That make that uh, does it for day two's solutions. If there are any comments or improvements, uh, other ways of doing it that are even more idiomatic in Rust, Please stick them in the comments below, otherwise we'll see you tomorrow.